I made a video a little ways back about this final pond in the main edible acres landscape. I'm going to link to that here for your review where I talk in pretty extensive detail about some renovations that I was doing around a ditch that feeds into this small pond that comes from the northern end of the property. Just very briefly, you can see I'm gesturing up along that line heading westbound. And that aggregates and collects the overflow water from a good third of this whole six acres worth of property. We have this beautiful, foggy, strange, cool day today. And I wanted to review that initial ditch that was dug and, and then the additional layer, since that was functioning well, and the very basic idea is that instead of having the water rush directly in through this original channel, where it was depositing a tremendous amount of silt and nutrient into the water, I simply dropped a log in that place and cut to allow the water to go this way. And I just left it there at that point. And it was functioning well enough. So the other day when I was here, uh, the ice was starting to thaw out in the ground. We're in this transitional moment where the ground is pretty thawed out, but there's a little bit of ice here or there. So I chipped away at the ice and had that water go deeper and deeper into this area, knowing that we're gonna be getting a lot more water coming through as the ground thaws, and then when we get rains and snows, uh, that water all has to go somewhere. And that gave me an opportunity to observe that as I had more water coming into this area, a fair amount was bleeding out that way to the north, which goes into a hedgerow and then ultimately into a common ditch between us and a neighbor's property, and then finally to a ditch over there. And rather than having the water go out that way, I dug down deeper and deeper and bermed that gently so that now the running water is coming in. It's losing its energetics by coming out into a flatter plane and then scooping around and very much losing the intensity of flow and finally pouring into the far end of this pond. And even though this is a really to me, a great way to ask the question of whether or not uh, gentle earthworks and how you're redirecting water works is where the water's running, you always are hoping for clear water. If it's cloudy, it may be running more aggressively and it's lifting silt and carrying uh, nutrient away. So if it's cloudy, you really want to make sure you have silt catching basins in your water. In other words, dig it out deeper in some areas or berm it up in some areas so that silt can accumulate. And ultimately, if it's going to a pond or a destination, even when that creek or that little waterway is running, you want to see still water in your pond. Now, this just filled up very quickly the other day. And so it's cloudy because of the uh, nutrient load that was in the water to begin with, but it's settling. And I went through and cut the bottom of this out again. I talk about the construction of this pond extensively in another video, which I'll link to here and it leaks, or it leaked pretty heavily, which has been fine, but I'd like it now to hold water. So I went through the bottom, I mucked out as much soil as I could. From the base, you can see where I've bermed it against an elderberry here, some gooseberries. I've added a lot more soil to plant into on the northern side, and I added a 50-pound bag of bentonite clay, which you can see the edges of. I dusted it through the whole thing. It filled with water, and now that clay has, is swelling, and wherever there are leaks and cracks, it should be packing those. Let me assess some of the silt catches that happen here, though. So again, my goal is always to see the water running as clear as possible, have as many twists and turns as possible, and if it needs to carry a soil load, which it will have periodically from pulse events, uh, that it has places to deposit that are meaningful. So that you can imagine this zoomed out, you know, if we were in an airplane, you see this sort of water feature in landscapes quite a bit. But here we've got this little delta, or berm. And imagine this wasn't here two days ago. Look at that texture. It's amazing tilth, amazing fertility right here. And like I've mentioned over and over in a lot of these videos, I'm now planting... Uh, so, for example, here's black currant. They can get bermed right up against that. 
But just seeing that in two or three days, without much heavy rain, we're gonna get a half inch of rain tonight, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to observe this. Ooh, that is cold. <laughs> uh, what I'll do is come through with a shovel and harvest all of this muck to basically hit the reset button. But because this area bleeds out into such a nice open splay in there, and in fact, I'm gonna come through with a shovel now that the ground is thawed enough and dig the rest of this honeysuckle out and make this whole area flat and level so that this water can come in and deposit a huge amount of silt. And that takes the pressure off from me having to clear out the silt after every rain. It gives more of a battery to store that soil. And by having the water come back around before it enters gently through vegetation, pretty much zero of that silt should pack into that pond at this point. But there's also a waterway on the east side here that I'd like to look at, a very minor adjustment that I made that seems quite impactful. So again, looking towards the west and a little bit south now, it's just a slightly uh, different watershed from the watershed that's roughly in this direction that aggregates and comes down along the water line I mentioned earlier and talked about in greater detail. You can see the minor lull in the landscape here where the water's coming through. And originally, this water was coming down, very gentle hand dug trench, followed along. I left a fair amount of the vegetation and debris just to capture nutrient and act as a filter. I don't really want to excel. I know it's going to get to the pond at this point. I don't need to accelerate it there. And then I trenched out and captured some silt to berm for another planting bed. And ultimately this comes down to here where I renovated. Again, you can see I left some more berms and interruptions so that we're not having silt rush in. And then last but not least, I modified this. So instead of coming directly into the pond where it left a huge plume of soil before, now keep in mind I made this pond originally six or seven years ago and I didn't know this yet, but it's great to know that you can do it wrong and make it better over time, especially if it's hand powered earthworks. I dug this out and deposited it and stepped on this area to pack that down to interrupt the water from wanting to go that way and simply cut, 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 deposit, deposit. And now it has to make a 90 degree turn and come around this way before it finally gently trickles into the pond over here. And by the time it's gone through all that rigmarole, all that interruption, What I'm seeing is a flow of water coming in, but enough diffusion that is absolutely still on the pond side. So it's collecting this water, but it's very thoroughly filtered. Now that the bentonite clay is in here, I should be able to start really peppering this with aquatic plants. I'd like to see cattails on the edges. I actually think I'd like to see potential rice production now that there's this floodplain that will be capturing silt, to have annual crops that can take that excess nutrient and periodic water flow, and then in the fall be able to harvest those annuals and muck that silt out to feed it to the perennials on the edges and have that uh, be a annual water loving space. One other very minor adjustment, then I'll wrap it up, is this waterway as it was coming in, the other day, I was, as I was cleaning out the silt, I noticed it was running with a decent amount of aggression and carrying a fair amount of cloudiness in it. Very simple. Up slope, I simply went through and cut a little to send it across contour, deposited just a little bit of that soil. I'm not trying to berm it, but just slow it down so that it kind of forks. See, it goes in two directions, but the majority of the energy comes this way and so the silt that was being carried in the water as it came down through the slightly accelerating valley gets shunted to the right fork. And you can see where it's deposited so much, well, to my eye, a lot of silt. That would all be silt that would be carried and deposited into the pond. In fact, it's all through here. This whole area filled, you can see, this is all silt, which I will muck out again. Very fine, beautiful texture. And I'm just chasing it across. It's minor enough that a riding mower in the summer, this will all dry out by the summer, 
It takes a final little scoop around a cultivar gooseberry, and again, I can harvest the silt and muck it right around the stems where these plants will root. And in fact, I'm gonna take this as an opportunity to keep harvesting silt in this whole berm and fill this entirely out with elderberries and currants since now it's primed to be able to harvest that. Once this little cup overflows, this scoop or the sickle, it simply bleeds out down through the lawn. You can see how wet it is and it re-enters, but all the nutrients here. Whatever nutrient gets lost into this lawn, once it dries down in the summer when I use an electric mower to mow through here, I'll harvest those grass clippings and feed them to adjacent beds. So very basic start of a design that over time has been deepened and deepened. I suspect in a few years the video will show an update with a lot more micro ponds and twists and turns in the water, but just a lot of food for thought during a thawed moment in the winter. Thanks for watching. If it's of interest, you can watch the rest of the video from here. I'm just going to continue to work on this one spur of a waterway. It's going to be a little long, this part. I won't edit it, and you can see what the pace looks like when I do this actual work.